two parts to our study. First part would be a reasonably straightforward study on the power of the cross and the blood of Jesus. Today, Jesus would have been in the house of Martha and Mary and Lazarus in Bethany. He came there six days before the, uh, his last Passover. Before that, he was hiding for a while in a place called Ephraim. There were two accesses to Jerusalem, through Jericho, the road that the Good Samaritan parable is based on, to Jerusalem, or else from Ephraim, Bethany, Bethlehem and Jerusalem. Uh, so today, Jesus was in Lazarus' house. This today is the day that uh, Mary of Bethany anointed him with perfume and he said she has anointed me for my burial. Uh, so every year at this time I begin to feel the pathos of the event of the Passion of Christ. I feel it's part of my calling. I meditate and ask the Lord to give me some new thoughts on the subject. And today he was felicitated and Mary of Bethany was uh, prophetic in what she did, isn't it? Uh, then uh, there's a book by Tolbrook about his mission in Indonesia that he uh, named Anointed for Burial. Because soon after the revival in Indonesia in the 1960s, uh, there was such a persecution, a bloodletting, many Christians being murdered. So he called that revival and anointed for burial, quoting from John chapter 12. And next day he set off to Jerusalem by his last time on a donkey and a full of a donkey, fulfilling Zechariah's prophecy. So that we call Palm Sunday, isn't it? And tomorrow we are all supposed to bring a branch, isn't it? Yeah, a palm branch. Uh, so Galatians 2.20, part of the cross for my decrease and Jesus increase. I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. This has been a scripture close to our heart, that as our call is lived out that I will decrease and Christ will increase. That's what John the Baptist also said in John 3.30. Uh, so that when, when Christ increases, obviously his riches also increase. Uh, this is part of my study today. And John 10, 17 to 18, for this reason the Father loves me because I lay down my life. Dhananjaya. You have to tell them they can't play the drum. They can't play the drum. For this reason the Father loves me because I lay down my love, life so that I may take it again. So we, through this study, we will just check out and see how much of life our life is invested and laid down for Christ and how much of it we have kept for ourselves, isn't it? So this all the time uh, goes on through our life journey, our nature to keep it, and the Christ called to, to take up his cross and deny ourselves and live more for him. So what we give up, he fills with what he has, are you able to send a message to stop the drum? Yeah. Uh, what we give up, he is able to fill up. If we don't make space, then he, he can't force himself in, isn't it? That, that donkey, that, new, new, that, that donkey, uh, it was a she because she was with a child and just recently delivered, but she, she could not do anything else but carry Christ. So we are also, our call is to carry him only and carry him all we can in all our thoughts, 
words, deeds, in our time, our talent, with our treasures, serve him, carry him. Uh, this was the basis of this ministry's call and we have to somehow see that another generation will follow the scripture, the reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it again. So Jesus takes up his life in us. Shall we make a short prayer together, Lord Jesus? We want you to take up your life in me as I make room for you. No one has taken it away from me, so others can't force it out of us. We have to give it over to him. And that exchange would be a rich experience. It would be like the man who found a great treasure. He said, it's such a great treasure, he sold everything he had to get that treasure. You remember the parables that Jesus pitched in Matthew 13? All those parables pitched the truth that all we have will be expended for what he has. So it will be a contradictory exercise uh, for us to try to have as much as what we like and also have as much as possible of what Christ has. It will be exercise in futility. What we have, we will lose. Luke 9, 14 says that he, he, he that de denies himself and takes up the Lord's cross is the call, the life of the cross. Uh, so, I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. In John 12, 24, he used the example of the corn of wheat. If it abides alone, it abides alone. Corn of, corn of wheat is my life. It falls down to the ground and is buried, just like Jesus was buried. And for a while, you will not see the harvest till the corn of wheat takes root and brings out and sheaves of harvest will come. Uh, this illustration is found in Isaiah 53 also. Uh, we live in an era that the advertisement of the gospel, the power of visibility, uh, power of doing, the output of the gospel is advertised a lot. Miracles, what happens. But to have that output, what goes in, input and the investment, is not preached enough. So people expect a very, very rewarded life with minimal investment. Then you have to ask them to reduce the sum. Yeah. Uh, for this reason, Father loves me. As we increase the investment, obviously the dividends also increase. I'll just pray one more time. Lord Jesus, we want to really get this into our heart that the investment is worth the while. As the old song says, though the teardrops start, I still want to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Hebrews 12, 10 to 24, you have come to Jesus, Dilshan me mat me karan ne be sadhu veli sadhu guda agar karan. Hebrews twelve twenty four, you have come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood which speaks better than the blood of Abel. So, whose blood speaks in you? Whose blood speaks in you? Is it the blood of the singular race, or the Tamil race, or the blood of ancestry, blood of former generations, uh, bad blood, 
spilled blood, uh, hot blood. Uh, we have said, Lord Jesus, what speaks to us and speaks through us, let it be your blood, isn't it? So Jesus' blood speaks better than our ancestral blood. Blood of Abel is the human line of blood. And Abel's brother was who? Yeah. Name of Abel's brother was Cain. And Cain killed Abel. And Abel's blood cried out to God and said, I am innocent, take vengeance. Jesus' blood cried out to God and said, I am innocent, Father forgive. Because his blood was innocent and was shed, he could say, Father, forgive. Uh, totally innocent, completely pure and holy, one sinless life, so that blood availed for our forgiveness. Lord Jesus, we want to make sure in all responses, it is Jesus' blood that speaks to us, speaks in us, speaks through us in forgiveness, forbearance, um, kindness, mercy, the blood of Jesus will speak for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Colossians 2, 14 to 15. Uh, are we moving the slides? Will you turn to your script? I, I assumed you are Sorry that I went so fast, I thought it's coming on the slides. Hebrews 12, we did Colossians 2, it's an important scripture. Colossians 2. out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us which was hostile to us so Jesus' blood cancels all these things if Jesus' blood does not cancel erase all these things will speak to us and speak from us deaths, grudges put downs, things done against us. We can't help but it comes out. Uh, so sometimes it can come out in sudden reactions, sometimes it can come out in dreams because it's, there's something against us which we are not even remembering. We are not anymore doing it consciously. But it's a certificate of debt from a past issue that has that the consisting of decrees against us uh, so it's like a court case it's like an indictment written in our conscience the uh, the things we held against others and what others held against us they repeat through our moods our thoughts our attitudes the way we treat some people uh, not well how we hold back, we wouldn't smile fully with some people. So there's a whole Schindler's list going on in us. Schindler's list was a good list, isn't it? Schindler had a list of Jews who had to be saved by giving money. That's during the time of Hitler's killing of Jewish businessmen. He had a list of whom he saved by different, different means. So that was a redemptive list. But these are certificates of debt which decrees against us, which was hostile to us. So Lord Jesus, we pray today. Well, Who is the drama down in there? Tell them not to play the drama. You go and tell them, I can't do the study while Trump is going. Having cancelled the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us, 
he has taken it out of the way having nailed it to the cross so this is what when we came to the cross he nailed it to the cross he raised it with his blood signed with his blood our decree of redemption who remembers the first chapter of tale of two cities what's the first chapter of tale of two cities uh neither do you remember the first chapter of tale of two cities better read it soon uh, first chapter of tale of two cities called to freedom is it it's a chapter on how dr mane is re released from prison called to freedom that's what the blood of jesus does i'm going on about this because without we knowing there are hostilities that work in us contradictions that come against us against our best intentions against our mm, sanctification we may uh, cultivate a good nature of christ but there'll be things in us that come against us and we have to go to the blood of jesus we have to go to the cross of christ now this is not only bad things later we will look at the exchange of the cross about the things we are proud of those things also have to go to the cross it is easy to take the bad things to the cross isn't it but then there are things we are proud of those things also have to go to the cross and cross has to make a real new beginning shall we say it is a real new beginning that's the power of the cross when he had disarmed the rulers and authorities he made a public display of them having triumphed over them through him so demons and devils the little fellows who are ruled by big fellows principalities and powers principalities are uh, territorial guardians demon guardians so western province river to river there are principalities take in the sri lanka situation powers are fellows who operate in sin powers so there are powers over heroin addiction powers over uh, pornography so you can see these powers are global but they have territorial application and generally there will be shrines and various other things that empower these that that they have made strong holds out of but all those things operate from these debt certificates antagonisms hostilities that have been written against each one of us when human beings are free by the blood of jesus demons have no foothold shall we say together when human beings are free by the blood of jesus demons have no foothold then they have to vacate that territory where those demons have to vacate gadara by the order of christ that man was set free probably he was a ruler of that area because uh, though they uh, when when jesus came again at that point they said you better leave our territory we don't want any more of our bacon industry to go down to more of our pig industry to go down one casting out a demon 2000 pigs died but when jesus returned to that area they all uh, they all came because that man of influence had been witness all over uh, to the people so having cancelled how the certificate of debt we are still not able to get the graphics no? now i want to uh, put this thought to you what is the first be attitude matthew 5 first be attitude matthew 5 blessed are the poor in spirit luke for 18 what did jesus say he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor 
So, 2 Corinthians 8 9, anyone knows by memory? Corinthians 8 9 for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich so Jesus's crucifixion he was very poorly treated he got no justice he got no dignity it was a terrible spectacle of how poor he became. In his birth, he became incarnation, he became poor. In his service, he served like a slave, a servant, and he and he further went down in his death. All that is because he took all our poverty, he took all our going down, he took all our put downs, so that we now don't have to do penance, self-flagellation, I am guilty, I have to repent again and again. So that's one extreme we go to when we feel the poverty. Understood or not? In our religious sacrifices, religious penances, we can feel that uh, I'm not really forgiven, I can't be forgiven, I have sinned so much. Uh, some people may feel like that constantly under condemnation. We will go to uh, slide number four. Yeah. Slide number four. Brother Jesus speaks not only to exchange our condemnation for his justification, but calls for a total exchange. Our ambition for Jesus' scope our value esteem for his cross worth, old friends for new ones, our old family for Christ's family. Anything more you like for exchange is what I've asked them. So let me get back to this theme. Christ invested himself, Christ divested himself and invested himself in us. Let's say together, Christ divested himself and invested himself in us that we might be rich in his sacrifice. So the natural man will still go for penance, kneeling, uh, dushkara kriya, uh, 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 you know, all kinds of harassing the body for the sins of the soul. Colossians 2 says that many religious practices have that. Even if we don't go for uh, putting down the body for the sins of our soul, uh, we, we can adopt uh, habits of uh, all the time, all the time saying you must repent, uh, your sin is terrible, treat sin rather than what Jesus has done. On the other extreme, there are Pharisees who are legally so righteous, they never wanted a saviour, and when the saviour came offering his righteousness, Pharisees said, keep it, we are already righteous, isn't it? And 1 Corinthians says, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to Greeks and a stumbling block to the Jews. So who are the Greeks? I think it's 1 Corinthians 2, 4. Who are the Greeks? The intellectual people. They say, why a cross? What rubbish? Why a saviour? So the preaching of the cross is foolishness to the intellect and stumbling block, an offence to the religious Jews who said, what do you mean? So they said, what do you mean we are sinners? We are Abraham's children. Then Jesus said, no, your father is not Abraham. Uh, they said, our father is Abraham. Then Jesus said, your father is not Abraham. Your father is the father of lies. So he confronted their sin. 
So there is this self-flagellation extreme of feeling condemned for our sin. Then there's the other extreme of, I don't need a savior, my righteousness is good enough. That's what Pharisees said. But here is Christ who makes us righteous, uh, who makes us rich in his mercy and his forgiveness. Next slide. So I have written, blessed are the poor in spirit, understanding our poverty, we came to the cross. Blessed are the poor in spirit, understanding our poverty, we came to the cross and came away with riches of his grace. So great a sacrifice reflects our dire spiritual readiness, neediness. All our brokenness came on Jesus. Cross speaks brokenness and blood speaks of great creatures transferred to our credit. Because of that once sinless perfect life, blood of Jesus supplies, blood of Abel demands. Blood of Abel is the old nature, isn't it? Blood of Abel demands. I am innocent, give vengeance for my blood. Blood of Jesus paid in full, all our dues. No more shortfall, no more extraction of wages or debt, dip, or no more extractions of wages of debts, are not debts, debts of sin. So if, you, if we do a, a statistical analysis here, if we are just a simple sample of human beings, 50% of us would be the oh my sin, oh my sin, oh my sin kind. 50% would be I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous kind. But both need, both need Christ, his riches and his forgiveness. Any questions to ask? Se what is the second beatitude? Next slide. Second beatitude. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Uh, what what are the second part of Jesus' Magna Carta? He anointed me, uh, the Lord has anointed me to preach good news and to heal the broken hearted. So on the cross, Christ was so broken, isn't it? Christ was so very broken emotionally, uh, emotionally and he was so degraded, insulted, made naked, a spectacle, uh, all, all, all that, the cross spectacle brings mourning to us, godly sorrow about our own nature. That's what the cross does. That's what happened to us when we came to the cross. And he took all our brokenness to heal us. Uh, so how was your cross experience? Did you come broken to him? And he healed the broken hearted? Or did he have to break you that for repentance to come? How was your personal experience? When you first heard the gospel, did it bring a message of healing? Thank you. I was looking for this kind of healing. I am feeling so broken hearted, uh, unable to raise my head. And thank you. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for healing my broken heart. Or was there a struggle during which time? Brokenness came. How did it go for you? Just a, just a poser. How did it go for you? Shall we take a little time on this broken, that he heals the broken hearted? On the cross he was so broken that he healed us. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus.
Sri Lalvi Lujas, pray these two things for us that uh, we are no more poor only because of the riches of Christ, that we will not have any other uh, pretentious riches, that we will not put up our intellect or wealth or family status or our ability, the, the, the presentable things that we have acquired will not speak more than the riches of Christ. Is it difficult to grasp what I am saying? That we all have achievement, isn't it? If Christ reaches to be riches for us, what He gives us, what He receives from us, will have to be more than our achievements. Nothing wrong with achievements. Let them not obstruct Jesus' more. That's the prayer. I decrease, Christ increase. I decrease, Christ increase. This, this is contrary to our nature of self because self wants to assert and be stable and not have any, any ups and downs. That's not the way of Christ. We come to a point, we think we have got it. Then again, there's a brokenness that makes for more of Christ to come into us. Isn't it? That's it. so. Sri Lal will lead us in prayer that Christ would be more. Yeah.